Confluence is a great tool, but over time, the information in there gets stale and old. So we have to take time to go through and improve it. We have to determine what's missing, what we have to replace, and other changes. Even realizing that this has to be done is a big step. But once we've determined it needs to be changed, there are a number of other challenges we can run into. So here, I'm going to walk through some of these challenges, many of which came from a recent training I did, I'll link to somewhere up here, and talk about some possible solutions. By no means is this every challenge we'll run into when we want to go into Confluence and change things. But it's a great place to start if you're running into trouble. So please use the comments to add other challenges you have, and we'll respond as quickly as we can with some solutions for you. Also, if you like this, please hit that like button and subscribe. But now we're going to jump into the challenges and then talk through some of the solutions. These are all of the challenges we're going to cover. Please use the chapters to skip around to specific ones you want. But we're going to dig in and start with general awareness. Oddly, one of the challenges that comes up is folks don't even know what Confluence is. Sometimes in an organization, teams might not realize that that's their knowledge base, or maybe executives just don't know that's where certain data is. And so when you approach them to improve it, that makes it really hard to get their buy-in. So here's a couple of things that I use when someone responds with, what are you talking about? The first is to just let them know what Confluence is. This means I need to come prepared to that discussion to show them how we currently use Confluence. And this will require me to go in and get some information. And you'll see this pop up in several of these challenges. I'll open up Confluence, check out the analytics, and see what numbers I can bring to the discussion. This will give me something to point at and say, look, only 10% of the population knows this exists or everyone uses it and makes it easier to convince them when the need is there. I also might take time to build out a model space or area of Confluence that's set up as perfectly as I can make it to show folks what it looks like when it's done well. This can give them something to go in and play with and get hands on and understand a little bit more about what this tool can do. The next challenge in this group is just not even knowing where to start. You might have identified a need to improve Confluence, but there's so much there you can't really figure out where to begin. So here, I like to sit down and just look at all of the spaces I have. I tend to look for ones that are called something like employee home or other spaces that a lot of people would use. And then I confirm that suspicion. Are people actually going there by checking in analytics? Once I've found one that seems to have a lot of traffic, then I can dig in and begin to work on it. Another way to approach this is just to pick a space that you use a lot. Maybe your team has one and you want to start by improving that one. That's a very easy candidate because you're already familiar with it and it will immediately benefit your team. So if it doesn't go as deep or as far as you want, you're still getting some value out of your discussions. Our next group of challenges are just the lack of resources or the inability to prioritize the work. These are very, very common because there's a lot of competing priorities. So let's take a look and see what some of these challenges look like. The first is we just don't have resources. We don't have the subject matter expert or we can't donate time or we don't have any budget to do this. For me, the budget one can be one of the easier ones to knock down. Many times improving a confluence space just takes a bit of time, so there's no extra dollars necessary to spend. Now, of course, if you've identified an app or you need a consulting group to help you, then you would have to argue for budget. But many times improving your confluence space doesn't require extra money. It just requires a little bit of time. A great way to push back on this one is to figure out and estimate about how much of your time it might take. And then if you need other people to help out, for example, an engineering expert to improve the engineering documentation, you might talk to that person and just briefly ask them, how much time would it take you to improve this area? Again, coming with a whole plan instead of just little pieces or just an idea makes it much easier for you to get this project done. The next challenge in this area is that there are just more important things going on. It's very uncommon that I see Confluence at the top of anyone's priority list. Companies tend to be focused on other things, which makes sense. A knowledge base or a collaborative area is not going to be the top of anyone's minds. That said, it still is an important aspect of the company. One way to push back against this is to ask around and collect feedback on how frustrating or how not useful the Confluence space could be. For example, if your human resources team is constantly complaining they have so many tickets to deal with, that might be a good argument for going in and updating their Confluence space. You might be able to deflect some of those tickets and save that human resources team a lot of time and effort. So taking time to understand what pain 
the challenges in the space causes on the individual or team level is another great way to get buy-in. Being told that this is not important is another challenge that comes up. Again, companies pretty much don't consider Confluence to be an area that's worth development. That said, the response here will be similar to the prior challenge. If you can take time to sit down and understand how much pain this is causing, how many extra tickets come up, how many extra hours of work someone has to spend, because the knowledge base, the collaborative space, the wiki isn't up to date, you can then make an argument for spending a little bit of time to go improve it. And depending on your environment, you might actually be able to put a dollar amount on that. How many hours of a support technician's time is spent answering tickets? What might that person be paid on average? And that can tell you how many dollars you can deflect or save by improving the confluence space. Another common piece of pushback is, well, it's not broken. It's always been like that. So why fix it? This is another common argument because many times folks just see confluence sitting there and they don't consider it a problem. So this is where we have to help them understand the pain. Again, talking, asking folks why they don't use it, what challenges that causes, or what other things they have to do to get the information they need is a great way to push back on this one. This could be anecdotal. You might get a list of quotes or comments from people explaining how much of their time, energy, and lives are spent doing things that aren't necessary because they can't find it in Confluence. So here you want to convince that person that it is broke and we should fix it. Another challenge is some other piece of software works fine and does this for us. Companies will have many different pieces of software floating around of information. And sure, the information might be available somewhere out there, but Confluence is intended to be the virtual meeting hall for everyone at the company. Everyone should know to go there first to get information. So why are we sending them to some other place, to some share drive to get benefits documents or API documentation? So here, the pushback would be to figure out what other software there is and what it does and then see how Confluence can be used to, if not host that information, link to it. I think of Confluence almost like an index. Someone should be able to go to a page in there and find a pointer to the information they need, whether it's a smart link or a link on a page or a whole iframe of the information. I should be able to find it in Confluence and get it. I shouldn't have to know that there's some other system out there. So take a look, do some homework and figure out what these other systems do. And then figure out how can you get that information accessible from Confluence. It doesn't have to live there, but you have to be able to find it from there. The next group of challenges are around content management and organizing things. The first is going down this project and people telling you they don't want to archive or delete anything. This makes sense because there is a page in Confluence and someone might need it. Now, this is a very common pushback in systems. Sometimes there's a lot of reports and everyone swears they need every single one. But then when you look at the metrics or see what people actually do, there's only a few that are actively used. The best pushback on this one is to show them numbers. Go into Confluence and pull analytics and show them how frequently some of this stuff is used. Many times pages will only be opened once or twice in the past few months. This is a good argument to either archive it or to update it. Or if you can, even delete it, just get rid of it entirely. So when someone gets to this stage, they're already bought in a little bit, but they just don't want to remove that thing. Show them how much it isn't being used or is being used to help convince them that, yes, it's okay to archive. And even then, remind them that archiving doesn't mean gone. Archiving just means it's not staring you in the face every time you go into Confluence. You can still go in and get that old page if you need it. This one is similar. Folks just don't agree on what to do with old data. Now, this might take the form of folks not wanting to move it out of a space. Or maybe multiple teams have multiple ideas on where it should go. Or maybe some folks want to archive it, but some folks don't. Here, we need to sit down with our stakeholders and understand why they want what they want. Why are they pushing back against moving it or not archiving it? Here, metrics can also be your friend. Just show folks how frequently it's used. You will also run into instances where one piece of content could be owned by multiple teams. Here, you might have a discussion to see who should own it. Perhaps it's an IT support policy. Should this live in the policy space or the IT space? Maybe they can't decide. So then you can mirror it. You can use something like the include page macro in both. Or you could provide a search on one of these spaces to point at the other one. So that information is available in both, but it only lives in one spot. This third challenge relates to resistance to changing the structure or using a new feature. It kind of relates to the if it's not broke, don't fix it argument. And here it's important to understand the current state of things. So do your homework and look into it. 
but also to consider how might we improve the user's experience, the person finding it by moving things around. For example, if a piece of engineering documentation is buried under several layers in the hierarchy, folks might not browse to it as easily. Or maybe the page isn't named well, so it's hard to find in search. You can point out these challenges and maybe even have some anecdotes from people who express frustration finding it to help push back on folks not wanting to change their structure. Again, here we're looking at improving the space, and it makes a lot of sense folks don't want to change. So let's focus on what they get out of the change. The last group is methodology or principles. And the challenge in here is not agreeing on design principles. Here, groups might have a rigid framework for how pages should look or certain things they always do or a methodology on what the pages should look like. And maybe multiple groups can't agree on that. Maybe there's a new idea that's been introduced and the old group doesn't want to change. Here, we have to sit down with everyone, and understand why they want their methodology or idea, and then help the other group understand the relative benefits. You might even need to go to an executive or someone who can just make a decision so you can move forward. The good news is if you're at this stage, you probably have some level of buy-in. So if that executive does have to make a tough call, at least the team should be able to move forward and keep going. So those are all the challenges that came up in that recent live training. There's a link down in the description and again at the start of this video. And I do also have other live trainings coming up for Confluence. I'll put a, a few of them up here for you. Please drop in a comment if you have other challenges or if you have ideas on how to solve these. I'll be happy to respond and see how we can unblock you and your team. Also, if you have a moment, please like and subscribe. That really helps me out and lets me know what content I should keep making. And thank you so much for spending time to learn how to overcome challenges improving a Confluence space. I really enjoyed that training. I hope you did too. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in another one of these again soon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.